Consider the line L1 given by the symmetric equations. X minus one over two equals Z plus one over minus one, comma, Y equals two. We wanna know are the following lines parallel, equal, intersecting, or skew to L1. First line, we have X minus five over two equals Y minus two over one equals Z plus three over minus one. First step is to switch over from symmetric equations to parametric equations. So for L1, what will we do? I'm going to take our two terms for x and z, set them equal to t, and then isolate the x and the z. Now, for the y equals 2, we just leave that as is. If you want to force a t into the equation, that's going to be equal to y equals 2 plus 0t. Now, over here, what are we going to do? If I set each of these equal to t, for instance, we can move the 2 over to get 2t. Then if I push that minus 1 over as a 1, we'll have x equals 1 plus 2t. For z plus 1 over minus 1 equal to t, okay, you move the minus 1 over, gives you a minus t. Move the 1 over as a minus 1, we get minus 1 minus t is equal to z. And then y is equal to 2 plus 0t. So for this line, the direction is given by V1 equal to 2, 0, minus 1. So that's the vector that we'll use. For our second line, okay, same idea. We're just going to set each of these. In this case, we'll set it equal to S. Okay, we're already using T, so we want to use a different variable. Then we isolate the X, Y, and Z, and then we get these three parametric equations. So here, if we peel the coefficients off of the S, the direction of this line is going to be given by the vector 2, 1, minus 1. Now, first thing we check, parallel. Two lines will be parallel if their directions okay, point in the same direction. So here, that's just going to mean they differ by a constant. Now, in this case, if we were to multiply anything times v1, the second term is always going to be equal to 0. So there's no way that V2 can be a constant multiple of V1. So that means our lines are not going to be parallel. If they're not parallel, they definitely don't have a shot at being equal, because if you're equal, you have to point in the same direction. So that leaves us with intersecting or skew. Now, if I want to check for intersecting, OK, we're just going to set our set of equations equal to one another, and then see if we can solve for S and T simultaneously. Now, the place to start is going to be in the y's, because if you notice, there's no t in here. We really have a 0 there. So that'll just give me the equation when we set the y's equal to one another. 2 equals 2 plus s, or s equals 0. So that gives us something to work with right off the bat. Then if we set the other equations equal, so if we set the x's equal, note we'll have 1 plus 2t equals 5 plus 2s. But since s is equal to 0, we just get a 5. And then that's going to leave me with t equal to 2. I go to z. So it could be minus 1 minus t equals minus 3 minus s. Or that's equal to minus 3. Move the minus 3 over. Move the t over. We're going to get a t equals 2 again. So if we got t equal to a different number, there would be no solution. But here, since they're consistent, that means we're going to have a point of intersection. And just to check it, Let's put s equals 0 into our second line, t equal to 2 into our first line. When we do both of those, what comes out? We'll have 5, 2, minus 3 coming out of both of them. So that means we're going to have an intersection at the point 5, 2, minus 3. For our next line, let's use x minus 1 over 2 equals y minus 1 over 1 equals z over minus 1. For our first line, we had these parametric equations, and we were using this vector as the direction of our line. For our new line, what do we have? So we're going to set each of these equal to the variable s, and then we're going to isolate the x, y, and z. So when we do that, we get these three parametric equations. Then if I peel up the coefficients from the s, it's going to give us the direction of this line, Okay, this vector here. 2, 1, minus 1. 
Again, we see, okay, these are not multiples. So we're not looking at a case of parallel or equal. Now, if I want to check for the intersecting property, let's take a look. We're going to set the x equations equal to one another, y equations equal to one another, and then the z equations equal to one another. Now, again, if we focus on the y's, okay, here we're going to have two equals, one plus s. So we'll have the s is equal to one. Then if we go to the x's, we'll have 1 plus 2t equals 1 plus 2s. It's going to give me s is equal to t. So using what we got from the y equations, we'll also have t is equal to 1. Then if we set the z's equal to each other, okay, we'll have minus 1 minus t is equal to minus s. So if we push things around, that'll give me s minus t is equal to 1. Then if we put in 1 for s and t, we have 0 is equal to 1. And that's bad. So that means there's no way we could solve all three of these equations at the same time. So that's going to mean there's no solution. So that means no point of intersection. In this case, that's what we mean by skew lines. Okay, third case. Let's suppose our equations are given to us in parametric form already. So let's suppose we have these for our last line. Then we note Okay, our direction is going to be given by the vector 10, 0, minus 5. So here we have 2 plus 0 times s. And we note these lines are going to be parallel. So the direction for this line is going to be 5 times direction for our first line. So the question is either they're going to be parallel, not intersecting, or it's just going to be the same line described differently. What do we do? Well, if I let s be equal to 0, okay, that's going to give me the point minus 19, 2, 9. Then I want to check if that point lives on our first line. So what we'll do is we'll just take the parametric equations of our first line. Okay, so we'll get x equals 1 plus 2t, y is equal to 2, z is equal to minus 1 minus t. Set them equal to minus 19, 2, and 9, and see if the t that comes out is consistent. Now, when we do this, okay, we're not going to get anything from our y's. You're just going to get the equation 2 equals 2. Okay, that doesn't give us any information, but at least it's not a 1 equals 0. Then we're going to get t equals minus 10, t equals minus 10. So that's going to mean minus 19, 2, 9 is going to be on both lines. So here we're in the case where our lines are equal.